Well, hey guys, welcome back to another Zero to 60. It is the next day after you saw me messing around with the stereo on this. Now, the plan was I was gonna finish the install last night. I edited the video, come back up here and start doing it. I was watching the comments roll in and a few of you guys said that you wanna see the install, so I couldn't argue with that. Plus, going to bed early sounded like a good idea. Um, now, what I did do before I saw the comments where you said you wanted to see the install, I've removed a bit more of the interior to give me access to get this all done. Uh, we'll start at the front. If you're gonna install one of these Androids in an E53. The first thing you need to do for the main screen at the front is pop out this trim. Uh, I just used a pry tool, and then there are some microscopic Phillips screwdrivers in there, and that's how that unit will come out. I have removed this side piece of trim, and that's so that we can feed the wires from there down under the carpet. Obviously the door rubber's been removed, the trim here. I've also removed the passenger seat. Um, now I can't remember doing that on my old car, but it just made it much easier to get this trim piece off so I can run the wire all the way around to the back. Now I do know some people will run the wire from the head unit down to here and then up through the roof pillar and then right down the back. I, uh, I just find it easier to do it this way. Don't know why, that's why I'm gonna do it. Um, anyway, so once you've got that trim off, the wire will come through here, up under this part of the seat, taking this corner part of the seat off and actually runs through this little cavity here and then out the back there oh and then out the back here and this is that six meter extension cable we mentioned now i will cable tie it up i want to basically run it in place and plug everything in make sure it all sounds all right start the car make sure there's no interference and then we know that it's going to be fine. Quite often when you're putting aftermarket stereos in, depending on where you position the cables, to be fair, BMWs aren't too bad, but where you position the cables can actually cause interference into the RCA. So I just want to check that the path I'm going to run them is fine before we lock it all into place. Last time I did an install on one of these, I actually used, um, well, first I did the high level input, which worked fine. Then I used aftermarket RCAs. I ended up using quite expensive ones. Uh, where today I'm going to use some second-hand ones that I think somebody gave to me. So I'm expecting some issues or interference problems. I've also got the full wiring pin out for these three connectors, and that's what we're going to have to connect into there. And yeah, I think it should be pretty straightforward. Let's start, well, let's continue by taking that front screen out. I actually got it wrong. It's the Torx bits, not the Phillips heads. Yeah, you've got to take the Torx bits out. And hopefully that's all of them. And then the unit should pull out, although because I've undone the Phillips heads, it's probably gonna come apart. But it doesn't matter, it's knackered. There she is there. And it's literally just those two wires that hold that thing in. And we've got a nice big cavity that nothing's gonna go in. All right, I'll undo those wires. So, so although for today's install, we're not gonna use these wires, I do wanna well, we will use them once we install the iBus. Now I've ordered an iBus USB dongle, and that is to uh, basically connect the Android, hopefully you can see me right, that is basically to connect the Android into the Cars Factory O onboard computer. Uh, it gives it a few cool little features, um, but we will use the CAN bus wire from in here to connect that into the Android. But for now they can just be tucked down there, and I'll keep feeding the amp wire from the back up here. All right, so quick update. I've got the main, the main six meter cable plugged into the head unit, and I've got three sets of RCAs. We've got two for the front channel. I've used the better of the RCAs for the main front channel. And then I've got two rear channel ones, which is this red and white one. And then we've got one channel going to the subwoofer. I would like to split the sub signal here, so it's actually got two wires going back, but I don't have the adapters to do it. Uh, I do have a splitter somewhere, but that splitter's gotta go at the amp end to split the sub signal into two channels. The RCA outputs on these Android head units are pretty crap. They're like, a, I think they're a 0 0.7 volt output, where if you went and bought like a good Alpine or a good aftermarket head unit, you'll get like a four volt pre-out. These are pretty mediocre, but it's gonna do the job for what we wanna do. So that is actually ready to slot into its hole. I'm not gonna actually screw it in for now. I'm just gonna sit it in there. But what I am gonna do as well, if I can find it, we've got the GPS dongle. Now, a lot of guys will actually mount these up on the dashboard. Uh, in my last E53, I literally just wedged it up on top of the heat event, and that's what I'm gonna do in this one, um, which I can't do one-handed. <laughs> all right, I'll get that mounted and we'll get it all put in. 
All right, so we've got the RCAs all the way from the front and the screen is now mounted. Uh, although the RCAs are not tucked away neatly. I've just got them loose and like I said earlier, I wanna make sure that we don't get any interference. Main cable's obviously coming back. Now this part here is gonna be the more time consuming part of the install. I've gotta check these pinouts, wiring pinouts I should say, and hook them all into the crossovers. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, I need to separate the channels for the tweeters, the mid-range, and the woofers in the front, and then the tweeter mid-range in the door, and then the woofers in the doors as well. So we're gonna have 10 channels of audio, which will be 20 wires from this harness connected into those, and then those can get connected to the aftermarket amps. I'm gonna get cutting and trimming. I will put in the description all of the color pinouts, well, that should be the pin pinouts, and I'll also put up a picture, hopefully, uh, of the pin diagrams. I hope that makes sense. If you've got any questions, let me know. All right, so we have all of the in-car or the in-cabin speakers done. So we've got six channels in the front and four channels in the back, all wired in. Um, yeah, it wasn't too bad. You just gotta make sure that you got the positive and negative around the wrong way, around the right way. Uh, if you get any of the positive or negatives incorrect, it will basically just make the whole system sound funky. Uh, this white wire is actually gonna be the remote turn on for both amplifiers. And I have decided for today, I'm just gonna wire in this little cheap amp into the factory subs. However, the factory subs are dual voice coils and they're also eight ohm voice coils. Now this amp, I can't remember where I got it from. I did buy it new, but it was really cheap. It was on clearance. Like it might've been like 20 bucks or something, um, but it's not very powerful. It's a 200 watt amp, apparently. Uh, I get the feeling it's one of those ones where they've just put a number on it and it'll never actually make that power. Um, now it says it is a stereo amp and it does have a bridged mode, but I can't remember what the wiring or what the circuitry is like inside in regards to what it does with the ohm ratings when it's in bridge mode. I feel like it was a fake bridge mode or it's either a fake stereo and it's not actually stereo. What I'm gonna do, which may work well or not, because we have the two dual voice coil subs, we've got four speaker wires, well, four wires going to the subs. I'm gonna wire each sub in parallel, which should drop each sub from eight ohms down to four ohms and then we'll basically have a four ohm stereo setup for the subs. I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna get wiring it in. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that's what I did on my old E53 and it still sounded like crap, but let's just run with it for now and see what it sounds like. Okay, so you may notice I removed the other couple of modules, the navigation drive and something else, I don't even know what it was. But I'm starting to work out how I'm gonna position all the amps in there. Um, the reason I did that, I didn't know whether I'd wanna extend the sub speaker wires yet. Um, if I can get away without extending them, I'd like to do that, just keep the wire, the extra wire in here as short as possible. Something else has just crossed my mind. The aftermarket amp has a 20 amp fuse. The DSP fuse in the car is a 30 amp fuse. So by my maths, I should be able to use the factory wiring to power this amp. Um, and that's what we have here. We've got a ground and a positive or whichever way it is. And that's the remote, which I think I've mentioned earlier. So I'm gonna use these wires, which were the power wires for the DSP to power the subwoofer amp. And then we'll use new wiring to power the high channel amp, which is actually a fair bit more powerful than that. Just for these tests that we're gonna to do today. So I'm gonna get the power wired in and then I guess I better power up the other amp as well. Okay, so we have the high channel or the amp for the inside, the main, the main door speakers, I forgot what they're called. Here, she's all wired in to each of the crossovers. We've got power, ground, we are connected to the remote signal over here. And I think I mentioned it earlier, but this is just a temporary setup to make sure we don't get any weird interference and that everything works before I fit it all in that hole. Uh, I've got power tied into the main distribution block here and I'm just going off the factory earth point for now. It's time to power it up, see if it works, see if we get audio, holy shit it's raining, which we need rain, so that's good. 
Yeah, see if we get any audio and then see. Sorry. If we've got all the channels around the right way. Because the way I fed the um, RCA through, I'm not sure which is subwoofer and what's rear channel. The other thing we're going to be battling with is, is the battery flat? Okay, and we're probably going to get an airbag light because the seat's out at the moment, but we can fix that. So let's power it on. Don't appear to be on fire, but the amps haven't turned on either. Not ideal. Okay, the amps haven't turned on. Maybe it's because this hasn't booted yet. That's working. Oh, amps have turned on. One of them has. Interesting. Let's see if that Alpine one's on. Oh, sorry about the audio for a minute there, guys. This one hasn't turned on. Is it because of this? Ah, it's just dodgy. Okay, I got this out of the parts car. I bet it's just a bit corroded and rusty. Hang on, let me fix that. Let me fix that. It's not fixed properly, but we now have power. Nothing's caught on fire. I can't hear any interference. And I am sitting on the center console. I'll just turn that off. Uh, we go. Apps. Haven't set this up properly yet. Are we going to get audio? Oh, we have audio. Um, they do it on GDRs as well. So I was like, oh shit, I really should have um, researched this. But I didn't really know that much about GDR replacements at the time. So uh, one of the things one of the guys said was to do. Yes. We have separate audio. Separate the outlets from the turbos. Coming from until all they get speakers. To the cooler, which we did. Right. Uh, what else can we check? All right, so it just makes sense to use YouTube videos because that way I can't get copyright striked. Um, now, I haven't really got my head around this unit yet, but somewhere we should be able to change the audio settings. There, amplifier. So we want sub up. See if we get any bass. Loudness on. Everything goes well. we'll try the fader. It's everything to the front. I have a part I have to go and deliver to them. And I'm probably going to do a bit of work on there. Everything to the rear. Uh, and is that one working? Out of it. So, no. Probably not going to be a okay. video Or is it? Today. No, okay, right. So I think way. we've got the RCA around the wrong way. Oh. So. If we take the rear channel out of this amp, and borrow that one. Oh, right. We have a wiring issue. Um... Because I'm getting audio coming out of the sub where this should be coming out of there. Well, we're getting there, but it hasn't quite gone to plan. All right. I wonder if the wiring diagram I got off the forum was wrong. That's a bit of a worry. All right. I'm going to do some playing, see if I can work it out. Okay. So I'm in the driver's seat. I'll explain what I did at the back, but I just wanted to try and tune it a little bit, uh, which is why I'm sitting in the driver's seat, although we've got no doors open and stuff at the moment, so it's gonna play with it. But we now have, we'll just go to like mid volume. 
and I've particularly, but I've particularly gone after this really bassy song, so we can sort of tune it for max bass, I guess, and then we shouldn't get any distortion. And another reason I do that is so that, um, shit. Let me turn it down. Another reason I do that is when you run it on normal settings, you don't get a drone if you're listening to any movies. Anyway, so right now we have right rear working. Hopefully you can hear that. And if we flick it over to the left rear. And then we'll go to the left front. Sorry, left front. Which is that there. And then we'll go over here. We have all the speakers around the right way. And let's turn it up a bit. That's max volume. Um, and that's to do with how I've set the gains on the amp. I mean, that's loud enough. That's about as loud as my E90. You could make it go a little bit louder, but it starts to verge on distortion. As you can tell, I'm probably shouting. Um, let me show you what I've done in the boot. All right, let's give you a bit of an update on what we ended up doing. So, oh, where is it? Where is it? The first 26-pin connector, which was the one that I wired into all the crossovers first, that had all of the internal speakers and it had one of the voice coils from the subwoofers uh, which we've just had to swap over here so this wire here that's now connected to the right rear crossover that was actually in the main harness and it was listed as being for the sub so anyway the wiring diagram that i got offline was 90 percent correct it just had one rear woofer and one subwoofer coil around the wrong way now i did mention it earlier when i was wiring them up the thing that scares me about that is if you get the polarity wrong on a speaker it will significantly hurt the quality um if you've got all of the speakers wired into positive on the amps to positive on the speakers and then you have one wired in round the other way it just messes with the whole system i don't know why i don't know if they fight against each other but you've got to try and get all your polarities right on modern stereos um now because we had an issue with the wiring information that I had. My polarities are now out of whack and it sort of scared me a little bit. So what I did, I basically found the bassiest song I can and a bassy song will be the easiest way to pick up on a polarity issue. I ran max bass, I had this cranked at the max and then I just ran the wires at different polarities for the subwoofer until that sounded the best. And then I did the same at the crossover for that right rear channel. And I think we've got it right. Now, a couple of people will be curious. Yeah, so this basic amplifier doesn't actually have a frequency cutoff. I can only select low pass, high pass, or let everything through. It's currently set to low pass, but because it's getting fed from the subwoofer channel from the Android anyway, it's already getting a low pass signal, but I've just got it set to low pass. These are what's holding us back at the moment. The way I've tuned this amp is actually limited by the sub. So what I'll try and do with the system, um, I will tune the weakest part of the system first. So in this case, this is the weakest link in the way that I'm gonna set it up. So I've got these basically set up as loud as they're gonna go, making as much noise as they're gonna go before they distort, and then I'll tune the other speakers. Now, the way that affects it, if, the, if I had a more powerful subwoofer, I could pull more bass out of the high end, but because of that sort of letting us down a little bit, we've gotta have these crossovers and frequencies set where they are. So I'm only running the main speakers inside the car at like 20% gain. That's all you can pump through it or else they really start to overpower the subwoofer. But the subwoofer is working as loud as it's gonna go. So that's how we're gonna run with it for now. As I said, it's probably loud enough. What do we got playing? YouTube auto playing, random stuff. Uh, NF. Let's go to a bassy song again. But yeah, steering wheel controls working. That's full volume and we shouldn't get any distortion. I think it's working. All right, we'll turn it off. We better let the battery charge up. Powering off. The amps turn off. They did. All right. 
So I'm probably going to end this video off here because it's probably long enough and the tuning is sort of done, although I'll probably just double check the settings again once we've got all the trim panels in. Unfortunately, I know with these, once you put all the trim panels in, it does quieten down the subs massively, where when we shut the doors up, these speakers are all just going to get louder. Um, but it'll just be a little bit of fettling for now. I'm probably going to run the 12s out of the other car. Sorry, they're not out of the car. Those brand new 212s, because that will allow me to pull more bass out of the inside speakers, giving them a little bit more volume and be able to crank it a little bit harder. Um, yeah, but I do like loud music, so we'll see how we go. But yeah, man, isn't it crazy? All of this just to replace the DSP, which I've put somewhere. Yeah, so all of that just to replace that. There we go. Uh, to be honest, this little bit of testing I've done now, that sub actually sounded better than I remember. Although I do remember when I was setting up my E53. So the GoPro's gone flat, that's how much filming I've done. Um, yeah, I'm going to end it off here. All, right, all I'm going to do to finish it off today is basically just title this up. I'm going to mount the Alpine amp to the same spot that the DSP was mounted to. And then hopefully just tuck that somewhere because it's not going to be in there forever. Um, yeah, I want to get some more bass into this thing and it will just make the whole thing sound a lot better and work a lot better. I don't know you might think it's overkill, but once you actually get moving and you've got a lot of road noise going on, you do want that extra, not just volume, but quality throoout the volume range and a, a better subwoofer is going to help with this setup. Interestingly, this is the exact setup, the same amps, the same crossovers. I bought one of those from my non-DSP car. Uh, it's the same setup that I had in my old E53 and I ran it for about, I reckon, a week before I was like, no, nah, we've got to go better. Um, but it was the subs that were killing me. Anyway, we'll end it off there. I've installed the Android. I've just got to make it look pretty now, which wouldn't be too bad. Oh, I'm going to get the airbag light off. But I'm looking forward to taking it for a cruise. That's what I'm going to do. I'm 12 years old. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Oh, and any questions about doing this, let me know. I'm, I'm pro at it now. <laughs> See ya.